The Magical Cloak Once upon a time, in the kingdom of Isadola, the queen gave birth to a very beautiful prince. The whole kingdom was overjoyed. And then came the day of christening the young prince. When the festivities were in full swing, an unexpected visitor startled everyone. An old woman, Igael, appeared there suddenly and standing on her toes, kissed the baby prince three times. Igael blessed the prince and told the king that he should be named Dolor. And then she saw a mark on the prince's leg and told the king that there was a mark of curse on them. The king and queen became much tensed. My king, what if Igael is right and our son is cursed? What if there is a problem with his legs? If it turns out to be true, then our boy will have other great abilities which will overshadow his shortcomings. This has always been the law of nature. As the prince grew older, the Igael's prediction of the curse and the king's worry turned out to be a reality. Prince Dollar would crawl, tumble and hop rather than walk. It was a pain for the king and the queen to watch their dearest son's sufferings. Dollar's evil uncle had his eyes on the throne since long. So after the death of the king and queen, the evil uncle came up with a sinister plan. He decided to manipulate Prince Dollar and take over the palace. Dollar, the king has to always be strong so that he can face all the attacks of the invaders and protect his kingdom from evils. Do you really think that you will be able to do so? Do you think you will be regarded as brave a king as your father? His words penetrated the mind of the prince. The wicked uncle kept repeating these words, and the prince became sure and soon it began creating a doubt about himself in the mind of the young, kind-hearted prince. I understand your worry, uncle. What do you suggest then? There is a nice village far from here. You can live there till you grow into a strong young man. All your needs will be taken care of. Your nurse will be with you at all times. As you say, dear uncle, I'll go away from the palace, but... But what about our kingdom? Don't you worry, dear. I and your cousin brothers will take good care of our kingdom, just like your father. So Prince Dollar with his nurse went to live in a faraway village, which was beyond the mountains. Prince was provided with books and other playthings, but still the prince felt lonely, as there was no one else to play with him or to share his feelings with. Dear people of Ezadola, the prince has been sent to live and grow stronger in proper care. And one day our dear prince will come back to lead this kingdom. Uh, 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 sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, of course, I mean, what's anything? So Prince Dollar spent his days and nights in the faraway village with his nurse, wondering if his ordeal would ever end. Prince Dollar's nurse spent time teaching him how to read and write, and so the prince started reading the books he had. He read about amazing lands on the earth and dreamt of going there. Oh, I wish I could travel to these lands and see them with my own eyes. As he spoke, he heard behind him a tap-tap sound. And turning around, he saw the sweet-looking old woman Igael in a starry gown. Dear Prince, I am your godmother, and 
I've come to show you a way to your destiny. All my dreams? Mere ambitions are just beautiful thoughts? For the fear in me is unconquerable. I've tried, Godmother. I've tried. Yes, Dollar. Only I can help you. That's the reason I have come to gift you with something special. Take this! What is this, Godmother? It is a traveling cloak. Just say, Abracadabra dum dum. And it will take you everywhere you wish to go. Remember, Abracadabra. Turn to return back. Take this and I must leave. I'll keep coming to visit you. The prince saw the cloak roll itself into a ball and picked it up and put it into his toy cupboard. Prince Dollar's heart was uplifted at what the godmother had said about the cloak. For the next few days, Prince Dollar kept the cloak hidden in the cupboard. When alone, he would see it and wonder if it really was a magical cloak. Godmother speaks for my happiness. I should try the cloak. Remember my words, Prince. Conquer your fears and you will be blessed with success and glory. You cannot walk, run, or play, but you will be able to fly. Use the cloak. Then, as the prince decided to try the cloak, voila! It slowly unfolded by itself and lay on the floor like a carpet. The prince watched it, his eyes shined with amazement, then hesitatingly tried it on. What did the godmother say to fly? Oh yes, uh, abracadabra dum-dum. And just as the prince had finished saying the magical words, the cloak began to rise slowly, higher and higher, and it flew out from the window into the dark blue sky above, and the earth was far down below. It was evening as the prince took his first flight on his magical cloak. Cold winds flowing as he ascended the dark blue sky. The stars came into view first, one, then many, and then countless. The breeze became more colder, and the prince shivered. I... I should return back now. Oh my god! What were the words to turn back? Uh, abracadabra turn turn? Though unsure, but as soon as Prince Dollar said the right words, the cloak began to turn around. When he reached the tower, he slipped in slowly. He had the cloak on when the door opened. Super time, Prince! Oh, it looks so nice and bright today. That's nice. Enjoy your supper and sleep well. The prince hungrily ate his supper, but sleep he could not get so easily. As he kept looking out and was excited thinking about where should he fly the next day. So the next day, Prince Dollar went through his morning lessons with delight. And when he was left alone, he took the cloak out and wore it. Abracadabra dum dum! and off the cloak flew on his command over wonderful hills of Highland. I wish I had magical glasses, which would help me see these lovely places and things close up. No sooner had he finished his wish, a pair of magical glasses dropped on his eyes, and he was able to see things so close as if he could almost touch them. With the help of magical glasses, Prince Dollar was able to see every blade of grass, every tiny bud and flower. And that's when he saw a flock of birds flying and started to fly and race with them. Ooh! Hoo -hoo, yippee! This is so much fun! Immersed in his newfound freedom and happiness, the prince slowly began to feel cold. I wish I had a blanket to keep me warm. A blanket magically appeared. 
and kept him warm. And then he realized that he was also very hungry. Hmm, I am so hungry. I wish I can have something to eat. And just like the glasses and blanket, all the prince's favorite dishes appeared magically before him to eat. After having the delicious food, Prince Dolor slowly went to sleep on the cloak. The prince woke up when he felt water in his hands. Now awake, the prince flew again. He was now in the countryside, which was covered with beautiful rivers, animals, trees, and even a waterfall. Oh, how I wish I could listen to everything better. And just then, the godmother sent him some silver ears that fit over his own, so he then could hear everything which he saw. His flying cloak dipped lower and brought him closer to see a young maiden girl, Lillaby, running in the field, being chased by a wolf. The prince gasped at her plight. <gasps> The wolf will catch up with her soon. I have to do something fast to help her. And for that, I must get down from the cloak. And without much ado, Prince Dolor jumped down and started running. First slowly, steadily, and then picking speed on his very own feet. As he neared the wolf, poof, the wolf magically evaporated. Oh, holy godmother, I am standing on my feet? Yes, Prince Dolor. Remember, I had told you if you conquer your fear, you will be glorious. That is the law and gift from the nature to all who believe. The smiling godmother vanishes, and the prince and maiden Lillaby became friends. You are the rightful heir to the throne, Prince. I mean, <laughs> dear King. Your evil uncle is no more. And you should go to your kingdom quickly before anybody else sits on your throne. And listening to the nurse, the Prince made a decision. Thanks. I shall try to reach there fast. That night, the Prince took out the cloak and said, Dear cloak, Please take me immediately to my kingdom. The cloak understood, and that night took the young prince to his kingdom of Isadolor. As they came above Dolor's kingdom, a colorful and shining magpie came next to them and started talking to the prince. Welcome, my dear king. Come with me and I will show you all around your kingdom. The magpie showed the entire palace to Dolor. And then she showed him the throne as the ministers were thinking, who would sit on the throne now? Hearing the nurse, Prince Dolor descended in front of his people and everyone became shocked and stunned. Dear all, I am Prince Dolor, your king and rightful heir to this throne. Seeing the prince and the marks on his feet, the loyal ministers recognized him, but were still having their doubts. That very moment, Prince Dolor saw invaders attacking his kingdom as they learned about his dead uncle, and now wanted to capture the kingdom. The prince with his magical cloak defeated the enemies bravely. Convinced and happy, the people of the kingdom started hailing Hurrah, Hurrah for, Prince for Prince Dollar! Dollar. Let Prince Let Dollar, Prince Dollar, be, Dollar our king. be our king! King, king Dollar! Dollar. Yoo -hoo. Yay! And thus, Prince Dollar became King Dollar, who reigned his kingdom wisely and protected his people from every harm throughout his life, and became well known as the People's King by having the nurse on his side as his prime minister. And as for Lillaby, they fell in love with each other. <laughs>